on the line right now, I have Oscar from Hammerfall. Oscar, thanks for taking the time to speak to me today. No problem. I'm happy to. Excellent. Now, you've got uh, now your latest album, Revolution, has been out for about a year now. How's that album going? It's uh, going really well. This was our first in a couple of years, and after the break that we took, so uh, we were kind of, well, I wouldn't say worried, but you never know, you know, like, is, is are people going to receive it as, as well as we hope? Uh, and I think it, both the album and the tour was, was better received than we ever could have hoped for. Okay, now you did take quite an extended break um, before this album was recorded. Um, was that beneficial, do you think, or...? Yeah, I, I think that helped tremendously, uh, both for for our um, uh, for for our our personal sake. I mean, just to get the fire back and, and everything, but also for how the album actually turned out because it was uh, we we got the like I said we got the fire back, we got the the energy back, and uh, it was. Now I wouldn't say it was not fun anymore before that, but it was going in that direction. You know, it was becoming less and less fun and more and more of a hassle. Yeah. And uh, when we restarted everything, it was all the joy was back again. Uh, it, you could really feel it right away. Am I right in saying that uh, Revolution was re- recorded in your uh, personal studio? Yes, uh, it, it was. Uh, it's a, re- a rehearsal room slash studio uh, and uh, and slash man cave, I think, because I have all my, <laughs> <laughs> my video games and stuff out there, too. Uh, but uh, it's yeah we did it uh, from the drums on uh, and everything except the vocals vocal recording and the mix of course was done uh, somewhere else but uh, all the recordings were done here so it it was really cool we spent about two months uh, here the the instrumentalist so to speak first the drums Mm -hmm. and then we did the rest and uh, I thought being at home would be weird but it was actually better for me uh, in a lot of ways because you don't didn't have to travel for half an hour to 40 minutes to, to go to wherever you were going yeah. uh, and also uh, because my um, uh, girlfriend was pregnant at the time it was good to be home uh, to see that she was all right all the time and not have to travel to Denmark or whatever which we have done before you know being gone for two months yeah uh, it, it was uh, it, it's really nice I love being, and, and also the being in your own studio means you can record what, whenever you want, basically. Mm. I mean, we're pretty, pretty standard. We do the recordings. We get up at, start at 10 and then end at whatever, when, we, when we're finished, basically. But um, if we wanted to, or if we needed more time, it was really easy to add it. You didn't have to ask anybody. You just, you know, we play, recorded whenever you wanted. So that was really uh, pressure, uh, took take the pressure off, off. It was very, very uh, stressless this this way of working we did like this the last time as well uh, around as well uh, mm. in our rehearsal uh, rehearsal room so I knew that uh, we had this this luxury of doing it this way but uh, I, I think this was the the easily for 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 us who were here recording it was the best recording that we have ever done the most um, most comfortable recording I would say yeah okay now Frederick Nordstrom uh, produced it now mm-hmm. looking from afar it seems that that guy is like a legend in the scene over there he seems to have done everything yeah uh, he is really a legend uh, I have a long relationship with Frederick uh, I, I met him in the 80s already uh, we, we were in a, in the music uh, I don't know what you call this in English but sort of you know where, where there's a, a, a some sort of uh, uh, organization. Well, I wouldn't say organization because that's not really what it is, but that's the best word I can find for it. Uh, anyway, for, for me, they had a rehearsal room, and this was all, uh, uh, all done in, in a school, of course, so uh, it was very strict. But you had a rehearsal room, and he was rehearsing there with this band, and this was 88, I would think, or something mm-hmm. like that. And uh, <clears throat> uh, the funny thing with Frederick is... He's known now as sort of the 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 Gothenburg sound mm. uh, spider, you know, in the spider in the spider in the way he's been doing all those the albums for all those bands with, mm. that that created the Gothenburg sound uh, in the '90s. And uh, the funny thing with this is, I was in a death metal band in, in, uh, at the turn of that decade, uh, so I would say and we recorded with him in '92. Uh, our debut album, the band was called Ceremony Loath, and he had never even heard heard of death metal back then. Uh, wow. He didn't okay. even know what it was. 
And um, so I remember he, him telling me, uh, like, because I asked him, I knew he had a studio. He asked if we're going to record something, just, you know, we can schedule something. And I, we had just got a record deal. So uh, I asked him if we could record it. Then he said, okay, yeah, sure. Uh, what kind of music do you play? Uh, well, it's death metal. And, and then he told me a long time afterwards uh, that he had, when we rehearsed, since it was, uh, you know, one band after another, he had, you know, he re- rehearsed between six and eight on a Wednesday and then eight to ten on Wednesday. It was somebody, some other band came in there and rehearsed. So uh, uh, there was a lot of bands. And he was, uh, he said he was outside the door when we rehearsed once and uh, like sort of peeped through the uh, the keyholes a little bit and, and saw me standing there screaming because I was singing the, uh, the and playing guitar in that band. And he w- was laughing because he didn't understand it at all. He had no idea what the hell was going on. Just <laughs> a bunch of noise and stuff for him. Uh, and from going from that and then recording uh, the Ceremony Oath album, which was the first death metal album he ever recorded, uh, wow. onto doing all those in flames and, and at the gates and dark and filthy and whatever. He's done mm. so many things. Yeah. Uh, and, and also Hammerfall as well. He did the first two Hammerfall albums. The, yeah. the, the produ- uh, we recorded them both in his studio, Frenma. Mm. Uh, and then, so we always wanted, we want, knew that we wanted to, to record with him again. And this was the perfect opportunity to do that. Yeah. Okay. Now you've been touring much to uh, support this album. Yeah, we did uh, quite an extensive tour in uh, January and February in Europe, and before that, we did a couple of weeks in Latin America as well, plus festivals, of course. You know, Europe is all, all filled with festivals during the summer, so we've done yeah. that since then. Do you do many of those? Yeah, I mean, we do quite a few, actually. I think we, we're up to about I mean, 14, 15, maybe, something like that this year. Wow. Um, and actually a bit more because we got some late late entrance so to speak uh, that we're doing now we did one last week in Slovakia and then we do another one in Czech Republic on uh, on Saturday now uh, which uh, I, I guess were they they were uh, late announced late so they uh, I think we there was a bit more than 15 now that I think about it wow that's crazy but yeah I mean but festivals in in Europe yeah is in the summertime it, this everywhere every country has at least one uh, usually a couple and countries like germany have many festivals mm. both big and small so it's it's uh, there's a lot of opportunities for bands to play and there's a lot of opportunities for people to to see their their bands mm. as well in the summer now i noticed that you're doing um uh 70, 000 tons in um what is it january or february it's february beginning of february yeah have you done that one before yeah we did it uh, like four four years ago or so maybe five i'm not I, yeah, I can't remember really but something like that they look like they are just crazy fun it, it was crazy fun in a lot of ways because you're on a boat and all that in the caribbean and all that it's, it's just fantastic but for me basically what it is is just a festival on a boat you know mm. that that's basically what it is uh and when we played there were so many bands that i wanted to see so I basically just ran around from stage to stage and <laughs> watched different bands. And then I slept a little bit and partied a little bit. But, you know, my main focus was seeing all these bands that I wanted to see. Yeah. And so for me, I was a little bit disappointed when I got back because the only time I really felt I was on a boat was, you know, when, when we on the, that day when they, they stopped in the middle of the, of the trip. They stopped, I think it was the Cayman Islands or something like that. That's where we stopped at that time. Uh, and and people could if they wanted to go ashore and and do activities. If we went went to uh, swim with uh, some sting race or maybe not sting race but race anyway. Yeah. Uh, that that you know they, people have organized and they fed them so they came up to us or whatever. Uh, and that was the only time I felt like I was in the Caribbean. Otherwise, <laughs> apart from that, I felt like I was on a festival somewhere. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, I'm gonna gonna try to enjoy the weather a little bit more this t- next time. Uh, I it, w- it was also storm storms a little bit. They had to on the last day of the of the of the of the boat of the trip. We had uh, I was gonna watch the the Venom set for on the main stage because I I missed the first one. We played more or less uh, together at that time. We played uh, so close together I couldn't see them in the first show because all bands would do two shows. That's another right. uh, thing. Uh, and uh, they had to cut the Venom set short by at least 30 minutes, maybe even half. I don't remember exactly because there was storms coming and they had to secure the stage so it wouldn't blow away uh, wow. like the, the side of the stage. So, yeah, that was very disappointing, too, because that's the only time now I finally get to see my, one of my favorite bands. And fuck, 
but you know that's the way it goes <laughs> yeah okay now you're coming down to australia you're doing mm-hmm. the quickest australian tour ever <laughs> in that you're coming yeah. all this way uh-huh. for one show please yeah. explain well, uh, this is the case of, of where people think that the bands uh, decide where to play and when. You know, it's uh, there's a lot of people involved in that decision, obviously. Yeah. Uh, and what we did, we we contacted uh, some promoter or our booking agency had a promoter that that wanted to do some shows in Australia uh, because we were going to Asia anyway. We we're going to go uh, play at the Loud Park Festival in Tokyo. That's what I was and, thinking. Yeah. yeah. Before that, so that's we were going to be in Asia anyway. We figured, why not try to go to Australia uh, when we, while we were already there? Yeah. Uh, and this promoter that that our booking agency were in contact with, he said, we better do one show now in Melbourne. I think this would work better uh, instead of a tour. And then if this show is a success, we can bring you back for a, a, a bigger tour later. Mm-hmm. That's basically the reasoning. Uh, and I, I could buy that. I mean, and now I notice also uh, somebody was tweeting about this a while ago that in the span of seven days or a week in that week that we were there there's going to be five big big shows mm. in, in now you had a um quite a unique situation recently where former guitarist stefan came in and filled in on bass right right um what's the deal with bass now well the thing was frederick wanted to uh he's got he was uh, having a second baby in uh in december and uh, he didn't want to do a tour in December and January with mm-hmm. a, a, a child, uh, a newborn at home. Uh, so he was on parental leave for a couple of months there. And uh, because we we had already announced everything and uh, we didn't want to let people down, as uh, uh, you know, just coming with a replacement that nobody knew of, mm-hmm. um, Joachim had this brilliant idea to bring Stefan back for, or ask him if he wanted to go back rather. Uh, and he was all for it. He thought it was really fun to, to be out playing again uh, because he's been, he left Hammerfall to become a, an airline pilot. Uh, yeah. It's like seven years ago, whenever that was, 2008, or I believe. Uh, so uh, he hasn't really done the touring thing since then. I mean, they tour in the sense they travel. They travel so much with the airlines as well, but but it's not the touring life. And he really wanted to get back into that. Uh, so everybody was very happy about uh, having him back. And he was, you know, I've, I've known him for so many years, and I always got along great with him. Uh, and that's that was that made it so cool to have him back for for this tour because he was so energized. You know, he hadn't done this for a year for a couple of years. Uh, he brought a lot of, of fresh energy into the band that we didn't have before. So okay. that was that was a ter- tremendous decision to have him on. Excellent. And Frederick's back. Yeah, yeah, right. He he came back in, in uh, March or whenever it was, uh, or, or yeah, so April I think was the first show we did with him. So he's back since then. Okay. Now, David's uh, reasonably new on drums. Mm-hmm. Um, tell us about him. Well, David is a, a, a chapter on his own. <laughs> no, he, he comes from from the Swedish band Pain. I don't know if you know about them in Australia, but they have some, uh, had a quite a long career. Uh, he's been he's drumming for them still, but they don't do much uh, at the moment. So, um, I, for he is like we had Anders before, uh, and uh, Anders is ten years older than I am, and David is. Uh, a couple of years younger. I'm not sure exactly how old he is now that I think about it, but he's like five years younger or, or three or whatever. Uh, but that that he had a lot of youthful enthusiasm that came into the band, uh, and that was really beneficial to us. Uh, he he's a great guy, really really nice guy to have in the band to to hang out with, and he's also a, a drummer that fits the style of Hammerfall really well because he plays the drums the way they were recorded if you know what i mean like uh that type of he plays the songs it, it just complements them really well that, okay. that, that's the best way i can put it and and that gives us a lot of more a lot more energy as well when we are performing uh on stage with him it, it uh, it's just a really good i, I think hammerfall has never sounded as good as we do now uh live the, the, and i think that has to do with a lot of factors but uh, the drumming is one but also i think um the fact that that people are energized energized again now and also a little bit older so we have more routine i mean i i think for me i i played for 15 years and uh, i got a little bit 
a little bit more uh, um, uh, experience, of course, a lot more experience, but a little bit more routine in everything. But when I, I approached 40, I think for me mentally something happened. So I, I play much better now because I'm, I'm more mature mentally now than I was before. Okay. And I think that this, this whole package that we have now is, is just really, really good. Okay. Oscar, fantastic talking to you. Um, I wish you uh, every success with the uh, the show that you're coming down to do in Australia, and we hope to see you back Thank for you. a full tour sometime yeah. soon. Yeah, thanks. I'm, I'm really hoping for that as well. Uh, but first now I'm going to go to Australia for the first time, and I'm really looking forward to that. So, so I hope to see you there. Thanks for talking to me. All right. No, no problem. Take care, man. All right. Thanks, Bye. mate.